I attended 2023's BlytheCon USA, which was held in Jersey City, New Jersey. The event was organized and hosted by Wonderland of Play. They schedule several events each and every year, and the organization was founded by Sherry and Susie in Belgium and Jen in New York. If you wanna find out about upcoming events, you should definitely follow them on Instagram at Wonderland of Play. They already are posting information about next year's events in London and Bruges and New York, as well as uh, next year's BlytheCon. I've never been to a doll convention before, so I wasn't sure what to expect. They had sold out all 500 tickets, so I knew it would be well attended. There were a lot of vendors, so I'll be showing footage of the amazing items for sale, and then at the end, I'll show what I actually bought. I do wanna mention that I have been to collector conventions, comic book conventions before. I've been to quite a few small ones, which you know are only attended by a few hundred people, and those are mostly just, you pay a very small ticket price, maybe five, $10 to get in, and mostly it's funded by the vendors renting tables in the space, and you walk through the vendors looking at their wares, and it's typically not a very lengthy experience unless you're drawn to something at each and every vendor table. Then I've also been to a huge convention like New York Comic Con, where yes, there are hundreds of vendors there, but there's also panels, speakers, um, events kind of to see that are presentations, etc., or, or even like activity spaces. So that's something that they expect you to hang out there all day long. Tickets can be expensive, even if it's just for one day. Usually you have to buy food there, which is also pretty pricey. And it's just all in all can be an exhausting experience. So when I got here, I really didn't know what this is gonna be, and it's actually um, different aspects of every convention I've been to. It, it wasn't an inexpensive ticket. I, I think it was like $90, I can't really remember anymore. But that ticket included entrance into the event, but also it included a lunch, it included a snack in the afternoon, it included a raffle ticket, and it included all day entrance into this space which wasn't just for vendors. Yes, there was a lunch break, so yeah, there was food and it was included and that was great, but there was a lot of space to sit and socialize. This convention was as much about socializing with fellow doll collectors and showing off your own dolls as much as it was checking out vendors and their wares and, and shopping, etc. It was more concentrated on the socializing aspect than any convention I'd ever been to before. Yes, I'd see people socialize at New York Comic Con, but there wasn't, there's very limited areas to sit and relax and chat. You're basically sitting on the floor if you can find a spare corner. Uh, sometimes there's a little lounge area, but not really. They really want you to keep walking around. There isn't that emphasis on here, gather in this area and chat with fellow fans. Like you have to make that area yourself. Whereas this space had dedicated areas just for that and encouraged that. And uh, some people just kind of chatted all day with other Dolly Collector friends. And that was really lovely. And I very much appreciated it and was very unique to this event for me. In terms of the vendors, uh, I was very impressed with all of them. They all had beautiful things. Vast majority of it was handmade. Um, I'm talking about people hand dyeing their fabrics or finding them in Europe and bringing them home to make beautiful doll clothes out of a lot of gorgeous customized dolls. Um, items like from Dream Space dolls, they make specialized doll carrier cases. Just a really, amazing variety of things. Quite a few of the vendors are well known amongst the doll community and a lot of their custom items, whether it be their custom dolls or dresses, uh, sold out very quickly. There were lines, uh, people just kind of beelined 
were there first thing in the morning to get to these vendors and buy out their wares, like uh, Be My Baby Cherry sold out all of their dolls. Very quickly, apparently. I didn't even see them until they were all sold out. So it's uh, pretty impressive that they have such a wonderful following that people were avidly waiting to get in early in the morning to be first shot at these vendors to buy some of their items. I also uh, had trouble getting footage of all the vendors because some of them were uh, so uh, crowded with lines of people trying to look at their items. So unfortunately, I don't have footage of every single vendor here. As I wandered the different vendor tables, I did become a little bit obsessive with several of the custom dolls. I was trying to stay within a budget, I blew that budget, but Splatter Girl was one who I kept over and over again going by her dolls because I thought they were so beautiful. Um, this is another one, Alter Ego Dolls. She had some really cute dolls. These were all Broadway show themed. Not all dolls were custom dolls. Uh, some dolls were, you know, original Blythe dolls, not customized, just e being used as models for people's wares and uh, were not for sale at all, but such imaginative different clothing styles, like every aesthetic you could imagine was represented. And oddly, it was only after I was in the editing process that I realized I did not get footage of several of the vendors I actually bought from because I was too busy looking through their items to actually purchase something. So I will highlight them when we get to going over my haul. This seller, uh, my beautiful Blythe, had some beautiful dolls, including this one right here. I was obsessed with her, but I actually don't, I think she's a custom pull-up but let me know what you all think in the comments. I assumed she was a pull-up and then I got home and I was like, maybe she wasn't a pull-up, I should have asked. Also this girl right here with the red hair, I think she's also a custom pull-up. Let me know in the comments below if that's not correct. Ophelia's Awfuls had a lot of cute stuff and she actually uh, donated something to the goodie bag, which is something I will also review at the end of the video when I'm going through my haul. When you walked in, they gave you your raffle ticket as well as a goodie bag full of lovely items. You also have the opportunity to buy uh, raffle tickets for special custom dolls. Uh, the raffle tickets were $10 a piece, so I only bought a couple of tickets. Uh, and the dolls were beautiful. I just, um, I always lose. So I didn't really want to spend money on raffle tickets. I never win anything like that. And I didn't that day. So to clarify, there were two levels of prizes. There was a raffle ticket that you were automatically given when you entered the convention. And that was for one of a variety of smaller prizes donated by a variety of people who are involved with Wonderland of Play, vendors, etc., or friends of the founders. Then there were the special raffle tickets that you actually had to purchase, and that was applied to winning uh, one of, gosh, I don't remember how many, it was like $12. You could pick whichever one you wanted to try to win. And they were all beautiful custom dolls uh, created, uh, donated by various artists who were involved in Wonderland of Play. And then uh, finally, I took some footage of just some of the dolls people attending brought with them to kind of show off and share with other doll collectors. There were lots of those too. So now we're gonna take a look at everything I got from this amazing event. So first off was the, I guess you call it goodie bag uh, or souvenir bag. Uh, everybody who attended got a Wonderland of Play logoed messenger bag. So it's just a little fabric messenger bag and it was filled with all kinds of goodies. Actually was really happy they gave me this bag instead of just another tote bag because uh, it was real easy to carry around for the event. The bag itself was filled with all of this. This right here is a handmade doll stand by Blue Mountain Blythes. Uh, they came to the event and gave away about 125 of these and I actually got one. Um, they just went with whoever had a birthday in September, October, and November. Um, so I was able to get one, so that was very nice. In addition to that, uh, Collecting Warehouse donated a bunch of little plastic bags for accessories and a doll stand, very useful. We got 
tiny little hangers from Ophelia's Offals, and they were at the event. We got a knitted, or and I should say I got in my bag. Not everybody got the same thing in their bags. Uh, I got a headband and little uh, knitted or crocheted handbag from uh, Mirror, Mirror Maid? Earth Angel Studios. Uh, Jen is one of the organizers. She uh, included this little blue teddy bear, very cute. So Cute Originals included, I think this is supposed to be maybe a little bracelet for a Blythe, very cute little peace signs. Oh, Dolly's Love Dresses, who I actually purchased some items from later. Uh, I got this little skirt from them in my bag. I got some pins. Oh, lots of pins. This is really cute. A new pull for a Blythe doll in the shape of, you know, the Statue of Liberty crown. Because the Wonderland of Play kind of mascot for this year uh, for BlytheCon in the US was this Blythe doll stylized like the Statue of Liberty. Uh, this was the program. You can see they had a lot of vendors. Um, a lot of door prize donors with the full schedule for the day in this program that was handed out when you arrived. Now from Sylvanian Blythe, I got this beautiful Statue of Liberty crown for a Blythe doll, so cute. This seller, I actually bought some fabric from later. They have specialized fabric printed in a scale that's perfect for dolls. Um, I think this fabric's really cute. It would make a perfect, like, quilt-looking blanket. Um, but obviously, they showed it as a doll dress print. So really cute. Um, there's a lot of, like, little things in here. Oh, here's another sticker. Um, here's a little lollipop charm. A tiny newspaper. Oh, and very important uh, information about next year's BlytheCon, which will be in Las Vegas. And that's August 25th, 2024, in case anybody's interested in going. Now let's take a look at the items I actually purchased, starting with these glasses. Both pairs of glasses came from Victoria Fox dolls. And you can see this does have actual lenses in it. Cute little kind of tortoiseshell pair for a Blythe doll. And I also got sunglasses. So cute. Next we have these three items from Dolly's Love Dresses. This set includes like a little, I'm gonna call it like a scarf or a fuzzy collar, little socks, this cute little dress. This was labeled as a Liberty of London print. So I believe, if not, it's inspired by Liberty of London, very much looks like Liberty of London, with this cute furry pink hat with a bow. So adorable. Next, we have this dress with a little bow with a hair clip. This dress I bought specifically because on a Blythe, it's a long dress, but on a pull-up, it would be a shorter dress. Um, and also, by the way, these dresses have a snap closure, which is very nice. Beautiful, love the gray and white stripe. And then finally, we have this set, which includes a dress. Love this little pattern, so cute with a collar, this cute little kind of beret hat, and matching socks. These socks are so soft. Next, we have fabric that I purchased from, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it, it seems like Jolie Fleur Fabrics. Here is their name. And it gave me a little sticker. I think this is a sticker. So I got some beautiful patterns to make either dresses or uh, bedding, possibly. Because I also bought a doll bed, which I'll show you in a moment. From Wooly Rockers, I got two outfits. She was actually having a sale at the end of the day, so I got this dress for $10. And it's super cute. It does snap in the back. I just like the green color. And then this adorable little set which includes a, a yellow knit sweater and this beautiful dress, which I think also is Liberty of London pattern. 
Um, really beautiful. I love this dress so much. So the previous items I bought added up to a lot of money in itself, but I also bought this bed. Uh, this was from uh, Lego Dolls and Teddies. And they were only selling one bed. I believe she said her husband welded this bed because it is metal. It came with this cute little mattress and a pillow. It has slats that are removable for the mattress to hold it in place. And as you can see, it is a beautiful little old fashioned metal bed frame painted in kind of a distressed teal color. I just love the bed. I love the look of the bed. Really cute. Here it is from the side. And it is the perfect size for a Blythe. The Blythe doll can lay on it flat. And finally, here is my big splurge of the day. I did not go intending to buy a custom Blythe doll, but I hadn't ruled it out. So this doll is a custom Neo Blythe by Rainbow Blythe. She's gorgeous. I love her. Mostly, first I fell in love with her because of her hair, um, but also her face. So this is a Neo Blythe customized head uh, with custom rooted hair. Uh, this is a natural fiber hair that she hand dyed. Obviously, she customized the face by carving and painting. She put in custom eye chips. I will uh, list all the details for her below. Look at her beautiful face. I love her eyebrows. They're purple, obviously. She has short strings, which are actually nice. They don't get as tangled and they're very pretty. You can see Rainbow Blythe 2022. So here are her eyes. So beautiful. She's on an abitsu body. The body is actually blushed. So she has a lot of articulation. She came wearing this little handmade sweater and scarf, these adorable little pants, little shoes, little socks. So with the abitsu body, she has, oh, she also has custom articulation in her neck. But the body itself has so many, so much range of motion her hands are covered, but because her sleeves are so long, but she does have hands, I swear. There they are. So, so much articulation options. She's so cute. I already ordered um, extra hands so she can have different hand molds. Um, I'm so impressed by her hair because it's such a gorgeous color and it is hand dyed and it is again, rooted. This is not a wig. So she's just gorgeous and I love her. You're gonna be seeing a lot of pictures of her on my Instagram if you follow that. I'll be posing her and the fake Blythe that I customized in various outfits that I picked up at BlytheCon. I had a great time. I wanna thank Wonderland of Play and everybody who helped out and all the people who donated. And it was a really great event. It was my first event. And I'm thinking about attending the Vegas event because it was really cool. And I haven't been to Vegas in years, so why not? Um, but thanks for joining me in this walkthrough. Let me know what you think of Blythe and BlytheCon. And I spent a lot of money there, but it's really all very pretty stuff. And I'm very excited. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below.